Hi, we have VST plugins. We buy them in abundance to get that elusive sound of pro equipment and our pro mix engineers. We hate them when they crash and we probably have way too many of them on our door. At least I know I do. So in this video, I'm going to take a deep dive into what Cubase offers to manage all of those plugins so that you know which ones are installed, where they are and how to make a large number of installed plugins more manageable. So let's go. Now a VST plugin is a piece of software that extends the functionality of a door, in this case Cubase. And that extension of the functionality basically happens in two ways. It either adds an audio effect or it adds a virtual instrument. Now VST is short for Virtual Studio Technology, and that's a plugin standard that Steinberg first released in 1996. And other audio plugin standards are, for example, audio units, AAX, RTES, TDM. But VST is a very big standard in that respect. The most current version of the standard is VST3 and Cubase 12 currently supports VST2 and VST3, but VST2 support is expected to stop somewhere in the next year probably in all Steinberg applications. I have a separate video what that means for you as a Cubase user and I will link to that video at the end of this one. Now to install a plugin you usually get a separate program for that from the plugin manufacturer, but fortunately more and more of those plugin manufacturers currently have a combined installer, which easily allows you to install just the plugins which you have a license for, which you've bought from them, and allows you to easily update all the plugins in one go. For example, you have the Steven Slate Audio Center, Plugin Alliances Installation Manager, Native Access, SoftTube Central, etc, etc. Now where those plugins are installed on your hard disk depends a bit on what type of plugin it is, VST2 or VST3, and which operating system you're running. But Steinberg has a very nice article about plugin locations for the various operating systems. So I will link that in the description so you can check it out when you need it. Now after installing a new plugin on your system, you usually have to restart Cubase because when Cubase starts up, it scans all plugin directories and then it detects any new plugins that you have installed and then you can use them in your mixes. Now typically on startup of Cubase, only the new plugins take a bit of extra time for startup, but sometimes I notice, for example, when you install a new Cubase version, or maybe even after a certain period, I'm not exactly sure what triggers it, but I do notice that every once in a while, Cubase fully rescans all my plugin directories, and then startup can take pretty long, because it's building a whole new map of which plugins are installed and where it can find them. But usually when you install a single plugin, it's pretty quick. Now Cubase itself also already contains a large number of VST audio effects and instruments that are installed right out of the box when you install Cubase. And they also offer a number of extra free plugins and instruments as well that you can install additionally after installing Cubase. I have several videos about additional instruments and effects offered by Steinberg, so you can check those out in those videos. But after you've installed all those plugins and you keep adding them year after year, how do you manage all of them? How do you know which ones are installed? How can you easily access them? Well, Cubase offers something called the VST Plugin Manager. Let's have a look. So you can find the Plugin Manager under Studio, VST Plugin Manager. And as you can see, it opens a long list of which plugins I have installed. And they're divided into VST Effect Plugins, VST Instruments, and the Block List. Now for the effects plugins, you can see the name, the vendor of the plugin, what sort of plugin it is. For example, these are audio restoration plugins and which VST version the plugin is. And also in the current project, how many instances of this plugin I am running. Now I can also filter this list so I can say show all plugins. You can also show plugins that support 64-bit float processing if you're interested in that. Or you can also say that it should hide the plugins that are currently in active collections, which is the part on the right here. And because I'm now showing the default collection that contains all plugins, you are not seeing any plugins on the left side anymore. So let's just show all plugins. If I select a plugin over here, I have opened up the information section. So you can see that it shows a lot of information about this plugin. One thing also being the installation path of where the plugin is installed. And you're also able to hide the plugin which sort of makes it more gray in the list. And this means that this plugin will no longer be offered in any plugin lists to select it when you want to put the plugin on a track, for example. Let's unhide it again. Now you also have the ability to search for a plugin. For example, if I want to search for Acon, it will only search for the name, by the way. So if I search for Lexicon, you can see it shows me some UAD Lexicon plugins. You can also rescan all plugins here, which is also something that Cubase does on startup. But you can see right now I have not 
installed any new plugins since Cubase started up. So no new plugins were added to the list. Now the next tab shows an overview of the VST instruments that I have installed in a very similar way with a lot of similar information in the information panel. And the block list basically contains a couple of plugins that have been blocked by Cubase for some reason. I'm not sure why exactly, but maybe there is something wrong with the VST2 version of this plugin because it's in the block list. I can reactivate it, but chances are that when Cubase restarts, it will put it on the block list again for the same reason that it put it on the block list now. Now, as a note, 32-bit plugins are no longer supported by Cubase 12. I think the last version of Cubase that supported 32-bit plugins is Cubase 8.5. So if you still want to run old Cubase project with 32-bit plugins, you do need to keep that version of Cubase on your system. Now, when you push the cockwheel down below here, you see that you get the VST plugin path settings. So the install location of VST3 plugins is pretty much set and determined, but VST2 plugins could still be installed in multiple locations. I think the preferred location is this one, Steinberg VST plugins or C program files VST plugins. But some installation programs, for example, from the Lexicon PCM native plugins, they installed it in their own directory. And to make sure that Cubase finds those plugins, even though they're not in one of the standard locations, you can add a plugin path over here to wherever you have additional VST2 plugins installed. Or you can also throw away a VST2 plugin path so that those plugins are no longer available. And you can reset the whole list to the standard VST2 plugin locations. Now it's also possible to generate a plugin report by pushing this button. So let's generate that one. Now there apparently already was a VST2 plugin report. And if I now go to my downloads, I can open this plugin report, for example, in Notepad. And you can see that it shows a lot of information on how many plugins are installed, my processor, which plugin parts I'm scanning, which plugins are on the block list, and basically a whole list of plugins that are currently enabled in Cubase. This might also be handy, for example, if you want to run your mix in a different studio to make sure that that different studio also has all the same plugins installed. Because if you scroll to the right over here, you can see that for each plugin, it also shows how many instances of each plugin are in the current project. So the other studio can then make sure that it has the same plugins installed as the ones you have installed on your door. Now at this point, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a thumbs up so that the video gets spread to more people by the YouTube algorithm. It really helps. And another thing that really helps to spread my videos is if you subscribe to the channel and if you push the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish another video so that you don't miss it. And for even more support, you can use the super thanks button below the video. Or if you want to buy anything at these stores, you can do so after clicking one of my affiliate links in the description and I will get a small commission of your purchase without any extra cost to you. But now back to the video and the collections in the plugin manager. Because in Cubase, plugins are arranged in collections, which you have on the right side of the VST plugin manager over here. And right now you can see that I have the default collection selected, which is the one that Cubase fills up with all the plugins that are installed in your system when it starts up. So these are folders, for example, over here, Ambisonics, Analyzer plugins, base related plugins etc etc now you have different collections for effects and vst instruments if i select vst instruments you can see that there is still the default collection but it has other folders with other plugins now for the default collection there are specific filters that you can enable you can say sort them by category and that's what it's set to now so you have base related plugins channel strips delays distortion plugins and if you sort by vendor you can see that the names of these folders are vendor related now you can create new collections and let me move this box a little bit to the left so you can see this new collection empty collection let's call it test and i can now basically drop plugins from my plugin list into that empty collection. And I can even create folders into the empty collection and put some plugins in that folder. And this way I can build my own collection of plugins. Now these plugin collections are used wherever you can select plugins in Cubase. And there's only one active collection at a time. So right now my test collection is active. As you can see over here, if I close the VST plugin manager and I go to the insert tab, for example, you can see over here as well that my test collection is active. And right now I can only select from the plugins which are in my test collection. Now, if I want to be able to select from all plugins again, I can just enable the default collection over here. And again, 
I can get whatever plugin I want sorted by either category like now or by vendor. Now, why would you use a collection? Now, for me, it helps tremendously in bringing back the number of plugins that I choose from when I'm mixing or recording. For example, if you look at what kind of collections I have, I have my Emily Favorites collection, which basically contains all my favorite effects plugins. These are my virtual guitar amps, my favorite channel strips, my favorite compressors, which is still a long list, admittedly, my favorite DSers, limiters, clippers, etc., etc. So if you looked at the plugin report, which I just generated, you saw that I have over 700 plugins installed on the system, including the default ones from Cubase. But in this collection, I have way fewer plugins than 700. So then it makes choosing a plugin much easier. And I don't have to wade through all the plugins that I'm not using anyway. So this is a collection with my favorites, but I also have a different type of collection organized in a slightly different way. For example, I have some of my favorite plugins also in a channel type collection. And then you can see, for example, that I have some favorite plugins that I would use on vocals, like a de-esser, two compressors, and a kit BBN105 for equalization, some favorite plugins for guitars, some favorite plugins for keyboards, and some favorite drum plugins, which I've even subdivided, some snare favorites, kick favorites, and favorites from the drum bus. And I even have a folder with some favorites for the mix bus over here. But you can be really creative when you make these collections. For example, you could also have collections based on the genre of music. So you could have folders for a certain genre, for example. Or maybe even categorize the plugins based on mood, if you're so inclined. And what's also very nice about these collections, which is especially applicable for this collection based on channel type, is that you can have the same plugin in multiple locations. For example, the kit BBN105, I have that as a nice snare plugin, but I also had it as a nice plugin for on vocals or even for on guitars. So it's a different view on the same favorite plugins, but it really helps when you just want to be creative and don't want to sort through all of those plugins that you have installed on your system. Now, hopefully this video has provided you with something that you can use when managing your own collections of plugins, maybe some helpful ideas or tips. And if you have something to add to that, or maybe a very creative way in which you use collections or deal with plugins, please add it to the comments so the other viewers can benefit of that as well. And I'm curious myself. Now talking about plugins, I already mentioned that the VST plugin standard will no longer be supported by Steinberg applications, probably somewhere up in the next year. And if you want to know more about that, I have a separate video on that subject. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon.